This is a model of Audi you have probably never heard of, and you will not believe what is hidden underneath the hood. Born in Germany with Audi and then recreated in the northern forests of Sweden, this is a V8 Quattro 1972 Audi 100 Coupe S. Quite possibly the longest car model name ever, but behold. <laughs> This video is brought to you by our friends at Solo Works Suspension, part of the KW Suspension family. I have literally driven tens of thousands of miles on Solo Works KW RST suspension, and this exact set of Solo Works in a special OEM black is going in my own Junkyard Harlequin Mark III Golf. So, big thank you to them. Please support them for supporting us and making this video possible. We're going to talk about what is under the hood. Originally, as far as I can tell, this car came with a four-cylinder 1.9 liter engine with less than 100 horsepower. Now it's packing well over 300. So let's go back to the workshop and talk about that properly. Well, I don't know if this is what you expected to find under the little short wheelbase Audi 100 Coupe S, but it is a big old V8. And when I say old, it's actually from a 1995 Audi S4 which was never available in North America with the V8. It is a quad cam 32 valve V8 at that. And underneath everything is modern. The gearbox, the transmission is a six speed manual from a 2005 Audi Allroad. Kind of mind blowing. The Swedish guys, I would like to imagine sitting in their dark winters, holed up in their garages, and perhaps there's whatever Swedish alcohol was involved or something, or at least crazy ideas and dreams, managed to shoehorn the engine in here. And if you take a look, there's no radiator up front. It is so tight in there, the radiator moved all the way to the back. Everything in this is just modernized and it actually really looks OEM. It really looks like it fits in there. If there's one little thing that I would like to see done at some point, these air intake tubes just look like they line up to the front headlight perfectly. So maybe we can have an air intake on either side. Otherwise, on the outside, you would never know that this is what is lurking, hiding, waiting underneath the hood. The new owner of this car is a gentleman called George Acorn, who I'm very excited to call a friend. He was one of the founders of VWVortex.com and Fortitude.com, along with Jamie Von Derska. So he was on the internet one day, like he does, and he saw this pop up, and he hadn't really seen it before. And he, he messaged the owner and said, hey, if you ever want to sell it, like, let me know. And the guy replied, yeah, I'll sell it. How's this price? And George said, yeah, that seems fine. And that was it, based on a couple of posts. And then we did have a friend in Sweden who knew somebody in the north of Sweden who drove out and took some silly videos of it driving just for fun. That was it. George sent his money across the Atlantic, and this got picked up by a truck and brought over. So. There's a few things that need to be updated. The battery was a little bit eh, melty, so we say, but um, yeah, we've been fixing it up here with him and, and that's it. So just a wild story on how this came to be sitting here in America. If you're wondering how I came to be involved in this project, once George had agreed to buy a car in Sweden, my day job is shipping cars. So I handled sending the money over, getting it picked up in Sweden. It did come on a boat with brand new Audis from Germany. So it had some very interesting other cars coming along with it. Since then, there's a couple of things that weren't really up to speed when we got it. So I've been tinkering with it for the last couple of weeks. Today is its first full test drive, and then it will go to George's garage later on today. So, interestingly in the seatbelt, there is no latch. You have to hook it into the latch, which is part of the buckle, and then snap it in. Which doesn't seem good when you have 300 some horsepower, but whatever. If you've noticed, the interior is a complete Audi C4 S4 interior. So the seats, dashboard, center console, steering wheel. Oh, and it is low. This exhaust is hanging very low. 
the whole car basically is being swapped to a C4 S4, which is the fourth generation of the C, you, you got it. So there is two harnesses for the wiring. The original one that does the lights, the horn, everything else. And then another one, which is from the S4 that runs everything else. And if you're wondering why I'm sweating a little bit, it is hot in here. It is also 90 some degrees outside. If you're European, it's uh, 32, 33 Celsius. Whew, there is no air conditioning. I don't think there was room in the engine bay for an air compressor. I spent a lot of time wiring the fans. It has the radiator mounted horizontally in the trunk with air scoops for inlet and outlet with a great big homemade steel cover but the wiring wasn't working. So I redesigned, it now has a three relay setup operating independently from the ignition. Woo! It rides pretty good, it really does. Steering wheel, okay, it needs a little alignment, but it's not pulling. Nice little burble from the V8, letting you know it's real. It does have the original brakes as well. I'm not gonna go uh, testing it on a track or any uh, brake performance test, but everything feels pretty good. Revs freely, sounds beautiful. Apart from feeling so low, just sitting just above the floorboards, looking out, it really does just look like you're driving a mid 90s Audi. Okay, door cards are original, they give it away a little bit. And curiously, if you want to wind the windows up or down, they do have the dashboards. You've got to open the door before you wind the windows, but hey, yeah, it happens. Such a, a mix. It's exactly what this car is. Just a, a mix of 1972 and 1995, but keeping it all original Audi. There's no Chevy. There's no crate 350 or 302 or something under the hood. drives exactly like you would expect from a V8 engine stuffed inside a very small, old school, lightweight car with absolutely no safety features or any other kind of weight holding it back. Thank you to George Acorn for letting me be a